Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by the American Digger Magazine in the Smoky Mountain Relic Room, and we are out in the wilds of Texas on another westward adventure. We're here in Shafter, Texas, down in the Big Bend country, literally right on the border, and we're here with Morris Carter. Morris, thank you so much for having us out here, man. Well, you bet. My pleasure. So, this is the silver capital of Texas. This is one of the greatest silver deposits of ore. Started around 1880. What kind of building do we have behind us? This here is the old jail of, of the town of Shafter, yes. Okay, so what kind of, you know, how important was a jail to a small community down here on the border? Well, there were 6,000 people living in this little town and uh, about 10 saloons. So we, they needed a jail really bad. Wow, so 10 saloons, a lot of people, that's crazy. What kind of, what was life like living down here on the border? Very hot, very rough. <laughs> Hard work, very little pay. Very little pay. Yeah. Yeah. This town has got some really cool history, and what we want to do is, is we want to show you one of the neatest things we've seen at any historical site that we've ever seen, and it's a very, very, very Texas thing. So let's go check out this town's museum, and we'll show you guys how you can come out here and, admit, and experience some of this ghost town. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's go. So the really cool thing about this town is, is that there's actually still people living here in and amongst the ruins. You'll see kind of behind me, there's a few scattered houses here or there, not many. But this town was, it had one of the largest or the largest silver strike in the state of Texas and one of the biggest in the country. This was a surface ore body. So what that means is, is that the ore, the silver ore, was literally on the surface. And what that prompted is, is open pit mining. Uh, this town is named after General Shafter, who is a really, really famous Civil War era general um, and Indian Wars era general. Once he saw the amount of silver that was here, he not only did he put his name to it, but he put his money to it as well and acted as a promoter for the town. So this silver ore body was a lot like the tombstone ore body where the ore was right straight up on the surface. So that prompted a lot of people to come here really quickly. This town and mine operated from the 1880s up until the 1940s. And one thing that's really interesting is, is that there is still, still a ton of silver left so that if somebody wanted to open up the mine and do it again, they could and they could get silver. And the joke around the town is, is that this town will boom and come back alive whenever silver hits $50 an ounce again, which who knows when that can be. One of the things that I wanted to show you guys is that, you know, the historical preservation of this place is in, you know, grave danger. Every time it rains, every time the wind blows, these buildings are literally turning back into earth. You know, these are adobe buildings. They are made of earthen brick and adobe does not last if it is not maintained. And unfortunately, the money's not there to maintain these buildings. So I want you to look behind me and check out this building that we've got going on here because this is the adobe brick that is starting to deteriorate. Every time it rains, every time something happens, this adobe starts to collapse and you can see the individual bricks and you can see the individual layers of adobe that were put on and see how it was constructed. So the biggest thing that I want to try to get across to you guys is that when you come out and visit these sites, visit, walk, do not pick anything up, do not collect anything, and most importantly, do not walk on and or touch the structures because this adobe is, is, a, is in a very, very fragile state. So come out here and enjoy this site and other sites, but don't touch the adobe. Leave it alone, leave it bare, just do nothing but take pictures and be grateful that you got to see this structure while walls were still standing before nature took it back. So the part of the mine that we're in now, this is the old ore processing center. This is where the ore would have been processed. So this is silver ore, which would have been mixed with other minerals and stuff on the surface, on, on top. 
they would have broken that ore off and they would have ground it and crushed it down and superheated it, adding chemicals to it and heat to, in a sense, get the, the silver out of it where it would have been shipped and mined off. And this area that I'm in right now, this is the processing center for that ore body, which it's still here, which is incredible that you can walk out and see the ruins of this site. One of the neatest things about this town is that there are still a lot of people, well not a lot, there's like six families that still live here that still call this place home. And they really care about their local history. Uh, so much so that they put together a really cool little museum. Now, you know, the people that live out west, especially down here in the Big Bend, you know, it's a really hard, hard life living here. And so, you know, these people have to have jobs and they've got to take care of themselves in the modern world. But they still want to tell the history of their town, of their story, and what happened here in this area. So they've got a fantastic museum that is really cool that is a kind of museum I've never seen before and I think it will blow you away and it is the most Texas type of museum that I've ever seen in my life and you'll see what we're talking about here in a second so I know you guys want to go check it out so let's go do it all right, so we saved the best for last because I wanted to show you guys something really, really cool and very, very, very Texas. So this building that you see behind me, this is the little open museum that's open to the public. There's no locks. There's no nothing in this building, and it covers the town history. I don't even know if there's GPS coordinates to it. We'll try to drop a pin or something so that you guys can find it because this little museum is definitely worth visiting. As you can see, all behind me, there are all kinds of displays that go on and on and on that covers the area history. And what's even neat, even neater, is that each one opens up and tells a really cool story of the families that lived here and of the history of the town itself. I've never been into a place like this before. I mean, it is just one of the coolest things I've seen. And it covers, you know, everything that you would wanna know about this town. So this display here, this is a really cool one. So this covers the history of the town of the mine. And it starts out, talks about how Shafter was originally founded, how it came to be. There's a photograph of the original ore, de ore, de ah, ore deposit. <laughs> it's like 115 degrees. We're <laughs> of the original ore deposit that was here. Um, covers why people were here. There was a really famous Texas Ranger that lived here. So, yeah, but the neatest thing that I want to show you guys is, let me get the camera spin, to spin around, is this. So, if you come into town, you need to sign in the guest book. So, here we signed in right there, me and my son, the buddy that's with us, Andre, told where we were from, and a spot to leave donations. So, we put, added five dollars, but there's, there's donation money right here under a freaking rock and a family history book if you wanted to sit and to read about the Brooks family all through the Civil War. But, I mean, how cool is that? That's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, you've got just, you know, hey, leave a donation, write your name down, and we'll do our best to, to try to use those proceeds to uptake of the place. So... Just something really, really cool, but I want to show you guys some of the displays. So we'll go through a couple of the displays and let you guys check them out. All right, so this is one of the first displays on Shafter history. You take it, you pull the pin, you open it up, and you get a display. And this one goes, Shafter has been called the richest acre of land in Texas, thanks to the Menina Grande, principal source of silver wealth that kept the Presidio Mining Company and its successor, the American Mining Company of Texas, operating for almost 60 years. It is located about one and a half miles west of the town. In 1883, the Mina Grande ore body was discovered. It was largely an open pit mining 
mining pit, one of the richest bodies of silver ore in history laying just underneath the surface of the ground. The first mining process under the Presidio Mining Company was the Menina Grande open cut, which is what you see right here. This is the Menina Grande open pit cut. The company was formed in 1883 by John Spencer, who was the founder, and General Shafter, who was the promoter, famous Civil War fame. They were both later to become stakeholders in the company. The mine was closed in 1942 for various reasons, but still large department deposits of silver ore are still under the ground of Shafter. And as the legend goes, if the price of silver is ever right or will get high enough, they will resume mining here. One of the most famous people that you had at Shafter was a really famous Texas Ranger, this guy here, Robert E. Speed. Robert E. Speed was in charge of this whole part of the Big Bend territory back in the teens and 20s and 30s. And if you can imagine being a Texas Ranger on horse trying to guard, you know, the largest silver ore deposit, you know, one of in North America and guard this town and the payroll and everything, he really had a heck of a job ahead of him. Texas Rangers played a very important role in helping to keep peace during the 1916 to 1920 Mexican border trouble. During this time, Texas Ranger Robert E. Speed was sent from Waco to serve in the Big Bend area. The Rangers that came were very well trained and dedicated to upholding the law, as this later proved to be true. Bob Speed served for many years as a ranger and then went out on, on to be deputy sheriff for many years in Presidio County. Located in Shafter, he was deputy sheriff and also worked for the American Metal Company, taking care of their mine and property. One of his main duties was to bring the payroll from Marfa twice a month, which was very heavily armed, as you would expect for a payroll train. Uh, known as a good lawman, he was never challenged, and rightly so. During the Depression, when the mine shut down, he had the sole responsibility to take care of all the company's properties and holdings and to take care of them he did, for there was no trouble for the company to start back up after the Depression. As all dedicated and brave law enforcement officers, they make a lot of friends, but also make a lot of enemies, especially those enemies who do not like to live by the law. The character and courage of this officer made some people both fear him and hate him. It was destined that this man would not live out a normal life, but to be shot in the back by some coward. It is unbelievable that this man, who had faced so much danger and excitement all of his life, would die from a bullet in the back, killed in Shafter, January 1, 1940, at the age of 63. He is buried in the Brooks Family Cemetery in Shafter. This is another one of the layouts that they show here of the town. And here is a shot of the actual mine itself. They've got all kinds of great family photos and photos of what life was like in the town all throughout this museum. This is definitely, definitely worth stopping and checking out. This collection is brought to you by this gentleman right here, World War II vet, Robert J. Speed, Georgie Speed, son of Robert E. Speed and Ida Brooks Speed, George's wife, Lucinda Spratt Speed, and son Robert. As it reads, I was born in Shafter and grew up here. I took my last two years of high school in Marfa and graduated with class of 1933. I am shown here as an officer in the Army during World War II, and I'm a graduate of Texas A&M. I wish to thank all of those who have helped in one way or the other to bring this memorial to Shafter. It has been a pleasure for me in my retired years to have the time to design and fabricate this outside museum for Shafter, and I hope you have enjoyed your visit here. And yes, sir, we have. Thank you for your service, and thank you for bringing us a one-of-a-kind memorial. And you see, guys, this is what local history is all about. You know, some of the coolest history that you'll ever read aren't going to take place in like places like Gettysburg or whatever. Yeah, those are cool, but some of the neatest history that you'll find is literally the history in your own backyard, the history of your town. We are so far away from nothing. I mean, there is nothing out here but this little town. It's just a handful of people that even live here. But 
the locals cared enough about their family history to build really a, one of the most unique, one-of-a-kind museums that I've ever had the privilege of touring and seeing. This was definitely worth the stop. If you're anywhere in the Big Bend country, I seriously recommend that you guys come and you check out this museum. We're just a few miles from the border. There'll be more info. I really, I, I'm so lost. I can't even like begin to tell you where we're actually at. Shafter, just put in Google Maps, Shafter, Shafter Museum. I'm sure something will come up, but this museum is definitely worth checking out. The biggest point is, is that local history is up to you. It is not up to the government. It is not up to, you know, the state. It is up to you. It is your history. So get out there and preserve it. Get out there and fight. Create something like this. Do something. But get out there and record and preserve your own history. And when you come and visit other people's history, be sure that you take care of it, that when you visit it, that you leave it like you saw it, and take care of it, basically, because, you know, it's, in the grand scheme of things, it's really, it's everybody's history. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I really hope that if you're new to the channel, that you'll like and subscribe. we got a lot more cool stuff coming up on this westward trip. We're just now starting. Isaac and I are touring all over the West, and we've got a lot of great episodes coming up soon. Be sure to check out the Smoky Mountain Relic Room, located in Sevierville, Tennessee, where we've got the largest diversity of history for sale anywhere in North America. But remember, history really, really does rock. Woohoo! You know, the terrible thing about coming out and filming in places like this is lack of restrooms. Andre, what are you doing? You're going to get snake bit doing that. I had the snake out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually got pulled over by HSI. I would be interested to know who the heck we got pulled over. The CIA or something crazy like that? That was crazy. Urgh, microphone! So obviously I forgot to turn on the stupid microphones. We'll have to do all this over again.